Hey guys, uh, we are here uh, for our next session. Uh, we have Kareem. He's going to do a talk on what we can learn from Bitcoin's nonce distribution. And if you guys can just confirm in the chat that you can hear him, uh, I will let him take it from here and do a deeper intro. Hey, can you guys hear me? Awesome. Um, cool. So let's get started. Uh, so hi, I'm Kareem. I'm a data analyst at Coinmetrics. Uh, and today I'm going to be talking about Bitcoin's nonce distribution and its security model. So uh, just a quick note before we get started. Uh, I know it says private and confidential at the bottom, but uh, this is actually public and like super communal. So, so go ahead and share it. So today I'm going to talk about attacking Bitcoin. Um, I'm going to talk about the risks that the network faces and how its net security model is changing. Uh, so we're going to take a little bit of a winding road to get there, so stay with me. Um, and it's going to involve a lot of on-chain data. So Bitcoin faces a ton of threats. Uh, some of them we're like, pretty well aware of, and others we're a lot less aware of. Uh, Online data, on-chain data gives us uh, the opportunity to quantify some of these risks in a way that isn't really possible otherwise. And one of those risks is old mining hardware. So the focus of my talk is going to be miners. So let's just get started on that. Uh, so mining is a huge part of Bitcoin security model. It's the primary differentiator from uh, other attempts at uh, money, uh, digital money. Uh, and the way that mining works is to set the order of the transactions, we need to have someone decide the order of the transactions within a block. And then we'll add that block to the chain of blocks, which we call a blockchain. So we let miners do that. Uh, to add a block to the blockchain, miners have to guess a value that lets them uh, lets the block header hash to below uh, a certain threshold that's set by the difficulty. The value that they're guessing is called the nonce. Um, and a nonce that's below that threshold is called uh, a golden nonce. So the network pays miners to make up for the energy that they burn while they're guessing these nonces. Uh, it's a very energy intensive process. And uh, the reward that they get from this is called the block reward. And they also get to collect uh, fees from transactions that are included in each block. So from the perspective of a miner, uh, finding this value, uh, the nonce, that is a lot like pulling a marble from a bag. Um, in this case, you're looking for a golden marble, which corresponds to the golden nonce, and every other marble you just discard, and you're pulling them one at a time. Uh, and in the old days, people would mine with CPUs, and they would they would pull them one at a time. Uh, now there's these specialized mining ships called ASICs that uh, let you basically pull them by the handful. They're a lot faster. They parallels, parallelize computation, and they're also uh, a lot more energy efficient. Um, so Another way to parallelize computation is by working with other miners. And uh, to do this, miners group themselves into pools, which are like loose coalitions of miners, of independent mining farms. Uh, and miners switch between pools all the time. So it's really important that a single attacker doesn't control more than half of the network's hash power at any point, um, because this lets them add blocks faster than anyone else uh, on the network, or everyone else on the network put together. Uh, this is what's called a 51% attack. And it lets them do some uncool stuff like uh, double spending. So you can spend on one chain uh, and then rewrite any trace that you ever spent that. And uh, you've effectively gotten whatever you got for free. So that's pretty uncool. So today it would take about four mining pools to uh, collude to 51% attack Bitcoin. We call this number the Nakamoto coefficient, just after Satoshi. So right now, the top pools are F2 pool, pool in, ant pool, and btc.com. The last two are actually both owned by Bitmain. Um, so if we count them as one entity, it's really just three pools colluding to 51% uh, attack Bitcoin. Um, getting three competitors to agree on this is, is pretty tough, um, but this number actually abstracts away a lot of the complexity involved in attacking the network. Um, for one thing, 
like I mentioned earlier, these pools are really just loose coalitions. Uh, they're operated by one operator, but the independent miners who have like sunk costs into ASICs, into leases, et cetera, um, they likely wouldn't side with a mining pool operator who attacked the network. Uh, it's because it's really not in their interest to attack the network. Um, and there's this suggestion called better hash that, uh, by the way, kind of just helps with this a little bit more. It lets miners select their own blocks effectively um, instead of the pool operator doing it. And that's really good for the decentralization of the network. Anyway, back to nonces, um, because this is going to be the crux of this talk. So uh, the golden nonces on the winning chain are stored on chain. Uh, and this is what those values look like plotted over time. So this is supposed to look like evenly distributed static. And you can see that there are a lot of regions that do look like evenly distributed static. Um, but there's a few things that kind of stick out because they're weird. One of them is on the left. So what's happening there is that, uh, like I mentioned, in the old days, miners would mine with CPUs. And so one way that you can do that is you can actually just start at zero, guess zero. OK, that didn't work. Throw that out. Guess one and continue incrementing up. Um, and that gives you the distribution that you're kind of seeing on the left hand side over there. Uh, that kind of transitions out and it enters into a more staticky period in the GPU era where people were actually sampling uh, randomly and, and these computations were parallelized. As you go farther right, um, these weird streaks start to exist. And those are really what we're gonna focus on in this talk. Um, what is causing these streaks? So what's causing the streaks? Well, one of the big theories until recently um, about what was the source of these was this thing called ASIC boost. ASIC boost is this controversial mining optimization. It's controversial for reasons I'm not really gonna get into. Uh, but the short of it is it was not caused by ASIC boost. And you can tell because there's, here's a plot of um, the blocks mined with ASIC boost, uh, over ASIC boost, which is the only one that was really possible to do since 2017 with SegWit. Um, on non-empty blocks and blocks mined without ASIC boost. And, and you can see they both kind of mine around the, the region. So that's not it. Anyway, remember these guys on the left? Um, they actually look a lot more like the one on the right. That's a Bitmain Antminer S9 mining rig, and it has a ton of ASICs inside. Uh, and it looks like the source of this weird striation is uh, this S9 and its slightly earlier cousin, the Antminer S7, um, both of which were manufactured by Bitmain. Uh, and, and just kind of as a side note, by the way, um, when I say the S9, I don't actually mean the specific S9 rig. Um, I mean the S9 and all of its relatives, very close relatives like the T9, the S9 SE, the entire family, um, the S9K. So just, just keep that in mind because there have been other variants of this rig that have been rolled out. Um, and anyway, so these streaks really line up with this timeline. Uh, the S7 was released in 2015 in August uh, and the bands kind of become visible late that year uh, as the S7 became the dominant miner on the network. Uh, the bands narrow out so they start out pretty wide and they actually become narrower over time. Uh, and they narrow out when uh, the S9 replaces the S7 as the dominant mining uh, hardware on the network uh, in 2016, in late 2016. Um, the S9 became dominant pretty fast and it was responsible for the majority of the hash power on the network for a while. Um, and it's pretty clear that these streaks are very, very visible for a while. Um, but they've started to fade out recently with uh, the rise of the Antminer S17 and also um, more recently the S19 is, is, is coming into play. Um, so these S9s are still in deployment, but they have really um, declined from their glory days. Anyway, I'm going to take a bit of a hard turn. Uh, this is the same plot of Bitcoin's nonce distribution, but it's broken up by the mining pool that received it. 
so in each block, there's this thing called the Coinbase data field. We can use the that that field is where miners can write whatever they want. Uh, in practice, they often use it to identify themselves. And um, we can use the information that they leave in that field to uh, see which miner mined a block. So this information is voluntary and falsifiable, but in practice, it seems to be quite reliable. And uh, each, in like today, almost all miners identify themselves in, in the Coinbase data field. Um, but it's really cool because we can actually like see the progression of mining pools over time. Uh, we can tell, you know, who's dominant when uh, based on the colors, and and that's that's dope. Um, so, kind of another aside, uh, there was this mining pool called Ghash.io that at one point actually did control half the hash power on the Bitcoin network. Um, through a series of de-escalations, they ended up uh, kind of being nullified, uh, but it's very important to understand who's mining what blocks, not just what the nonces look like in, in this context. Anyway, so we can take a look at the uh, individual pools and the nonce distributions of these individual pools, and that's pretty exciting. Uh, so here is a plot of the nonces of um, the blocks bind, mined by Bitmain affiliated pools. So um, Bitmain, like I mentioned earlier, uh, owns uh, both Antpool and BTC.com. They are also the only investor in via BTC. Uh, so all three of these pools, you know, have have pretty close relationships with the manufacturer of the S7s and the S9s. Um, anyway, these pools, kind of just eyeballing it, seem to mine nonces a lot less within the striated regions. This kind of makes a lot of sense because they have a close relationship with the manufacturer of the chips that seem to be responsible for the streaking pattern. Um, so anyway, just a, just a pretty exciting thing that you can do with this data. Okay, turning back towards aggregate data. Um, and this is actually like these plots, they're brand new. These are the first attempt at quantifying something like this. Um, and nobody's seen them before you guys. So if we make a few assumptions about the nonce distribution, we can do some really cool stuff uh, security-wise. So uh, we have to assume that the S7s don't mine within the wide S7 band. The S9s don't mine within the wide S9 band. Um, everyone else mines uniformly. And uh, those two rigs mine uniformly outside of their respective bands. But what that lets us do is we can then extrapolate out the proportions of each type of rig on the network. Um, and so what we see is that um, the S7 uh, peaked at about 61% of hash power. And uh, today, they're not significant at all. And the S9 peaked at uh, about 78%. And now they account for about 23% of hash power on the network. There's a recent spike up to 32 um, it's hard to tell whether that's market forces in, at work or if it's just anomalous because we're at the start of a new difficulty period. Uh, so just something to note, but but um, 23 is the number that we're going with here. So to sanity check these numbers, we can run them against uh, the other non-quantitative approaches that people have taken toward this. So this is an excerpt from um, the CoinShares mining report that was released in December of 2019. Highly recommend it. Um, and it says that S9s are responsible for about two thirds of mining hardware in their equivalence class. Uh, so that's cool. We did well. Um, this is really good because this is different enough from our 78% number that it's interesting. And it's close enough that uh, it seems like we're roughly headed in the right direction. So uh, note that they are measuring slightly different metrics, but like they're related and, and this isn't bad at all. Uh, it's actually really good. And as for S7s, it's it's hard to find figures. Um, the CoinShares of report assumes that there's still a few units online, but there's a lot of uncertainty around how many, um, around the number that were manufactured in total in the first place. Um, this more or less matches up with what I've heard anecdotally. There's uh, a few 
firms that I've heard that use them, but generally S7s really aren't used anymore. Uh, this is a plot of the total hash power on the network as accounted for by each rig. Um, the way that we do this is we take the proportion from earlier and multiply it by the network hash rate. Um, as you can see, like the thing that sticks out the most is that Bitcoin's hash rate has been growing pretty much exponentially. I mean, like on a linear chart, um, most of Bitcoin's history just doesn't show up. It shows up as zero uh, compared to today's enormous hash rate. Uh, but the other thing that you should take note of is that um, S9s used to provide about 52 exa hashes per second of hash power. And these days they give about 26. Other miners give about 87. So why does this matter? Um, this is really important. This is really cool. Um, so old ASICs change the security, minel, security model that ASIC mined coins rely on. Um, old ASICs cost very, very little to buy on secondary markets. Uh, they cost about $80. And uh, they're still almost uh, they're still almost efficient under some circumstances, especially with cheap elect electricity. They actually can be profitable to mine with these, and your uh, upfront capital expenditures are expenses are very very low. Um, so they really change the vested interest model that Bitcoin has relied on since the. ASIC era began. Um, and in a lot of ways, they change it to resemble nice hash. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, uh, there's this hash power marketplace called nice hash where you can rent uh, mining power from miners who may or may not be running economically efficient operations on their own and just wanna sell out that, that extra hash power. Um, I won't get into the weeds of it, but Nice hash has been used to attack a lot of altcoins, um, notably Vertcoin, like twice. Uh, but Bitcoin still got way too much hash power to get nice hash attacked, and you can kind of see that on the on the table on the left. Um, nice hashable proportion is about zero percent, um, and uh, yeah. So these S nines kind of change the game. Like they make it like a tangible proportion of Bitcoin's hash power is quasi nice hashable. Um, suddenly there are way lower upfront costs to attacking the network. And um, anyway, I don't think Bitcoin's gonna get 51% attacked anytime soon, by the way, uh, just because these, if, if for nothing else, then just because these 25 exa hashes per second of uh, power aren't nearly enough to really do that on Bitcoin. but. This is a dark horse. This is the kind of thing that we haven't really historically accounted for, and it, it does change the equation. Um, and it is a substantial portion of the network hash power. In fact, it's so substantial that Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV each only have less than two exa hashes per second of hash power securing them. So this alone could just simply dwarf those. Um, anyway, being able to quantify the risk of these attacks is really, really important. And uh, this lets it, data lets us do that. So here's some further interesting, further reading if you're interested. Um, I definitely recommend the CoinShares report. It's one of the most comprehensive reports on mining that I've read. Um, my report uh, for coin metrics that this talk is based on um, is up at the top. Uh, and um, Crypto51 is where I got the numbers for all of the uh, the uh, nice hash numbers. So um, anyway, definitely recommend that. Uh, and yeah, that's thanks for listening. Um, feel free to ask questions now. All right. Um, have you answered all the questions or is there anything else you guys would like to cover?
Uh, Kareem, can you hear us? Oh, um, yeah, I can hear you. Uh, I haven't seen any questions yet. Oh, sorry, actually, there's one from Will. Um, so the question is how to deal with the problem of a miner getting less and less reward after having. Um, this is a really good question. So there's this concern about um, the uh, security multiple on Bitcoin. Um, so uh, <laughs> the answer is that one's roughly unsolved. Um, it doesn't look like it's going to be a problem in this having. Um, I am unclear on if in the long run it'll it'll be problematic. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that one's, I, I don't really have the answer to that. I don't think anyone does, um, but thanks for asking. Um, there's another one from Chan. Uh, did you look into the Extronauts too? Um, we did not, but we looked at the uh, versioning field that's used by ASIC Boost uh, over at ASIC Boost um, rolling. So uh, ASIC Boost is the optimization that I mentioned earlier that uh, is controversial um, because it requires miners to bump a field that they're really not supposed to bump. Um, and that's how we got the, the ASIC boost over at ASIC boost numbers is just by if, if the version doesn't match up with something that um, is real, uh, <laughs> we, we got that. Um, as for, is there a reason for that the S7s and S9s don't mine in those bands? Um, could be a hardware quirk, could be a firmware quirk, uh, no way to really know. These chips are super, super optimized. Um, so it, uh, it could just be an artifact of optimization. Whatever it is, it's, it's relatively harmless, but it lets us uh, extrapolate out the numbers of these miners on the network. Um, another question, what is the percentage of hash rate that could be introduced by S9s? Um, so there are 25-ish exahashes per second of S9 power that um, are like out there that is just simply like not accounted for and they're not running. Um, they are not live on the network today. They could be bought up. They could be used to attack the network, anything like that. Um, yeah, any other questions? There's a question box that I just discovered, so. <laughs> All right, um, if there's nothing else, then cool. Okay, fantastic. Uh, so we are going to take a short three-ish minute break and then we're going to start the next session. All right, thanks so much, this was really great. Yeah, thank you. All right, take care.